Stores could be start closing if the labor and the product shortages worsen much more than what they are now. We're on the verge of bursting a major bubble. There's a lot of stuff that's going on out there. No, you're not imagining it. <laughs> some grocery store shelves and some store shelves are all bare again, right? I mean, it's just bringing up all these bad memories that we had that started back in March of 2020. When you walked into that store and you couldn't get what you wanted. And now you have all these stores and stuff that are having to put up all these different signs and stuff to make us aware of the problem. It's like we don't need a sign to tell us that there's shortages. We can figure that out for ourselves. Well, most people can figure that out for themselves. We don't need these stores to put up a sign and tell us that due to the shortages that, you know, the product that you're looking for is not available and it should be back on the shelf soon. You know, and some of the reasons for the dwindling stocks are numerous. I mean, it's, there is just so much crap that is going on that goes into this whole thing of these shortages. It's just ridiculous. Do they think that we really just don't understand what is going on? We're really seeing the perfect storm. Now, I've talked about this many times, folks, about we're going through this perfect storm and this storm is getting really, really, really ugly. Um, the boat is taking on water if you're not prepared. And it's all it's going to take is that one wave to hit your boat. And if you're not prepared, folks, well, it's not going to be a beautiful day in a neighborhood. I can tell you that right now. And Mr. Rogers would be rolling over in his grave, right? The Northeast is facing some of the worst shortages now, due in part to now they're saying it's the winter storms. It's just more BS that these people are putting into the whole media thing. See, folks, you have to look at it this way. These companies and these CEOs and these analysts and all these other people, they're all in cahoots together because all they're worried about is making money. They could care less about what they're charging us. They could care less about their employees or anything else. I think his name is Nate Ross, and he is the communications director for the California Grocers Association. And he said that this doesn't have any comparison to what took place in March of 2020. Yeah, I mean, then the stores were completely emptied out and they tried to restock them a little bit, but it never ever got to the point where they restocked the stores, right? You know, he said something about there are like some issues with out of stocks, but it tends to be a situation where, get this, if you go to the store on Tuesday night, maybe something's out of stock. But then again, if you go back on Wednesday, it's back in the store. So, okay, so maybe a truck came in Tuesday night, could be in the store Wednesday morning, but if you go back Wednesday night after you get out of work, it's not in the store again. So we're back in the same boat, right? They don't have enough product to keep putting it out on the shelf to keep the shelves full. The trucks come in, they unload the product, it goes out on the floor, boom, there you go. And as soon as people know it's there, Hello, it's gone. So if you're not like first come, first serve, you're not getting it. All right, so I don't know where this guy's coming from. No, I mean, but just goes to show you, they really just don't know what they're talking about. Everyone's become really reliant on a, you know, the just-in-time delivery. The just-in-time delivery is out the door, folks. Okay, that is over. It's said, it's done, it's gone. Okay, that doesn't exist anymore at this point in time. And I don't know if it's ever going to come back. But this guy thinks that, oh, well, it's going to be back within the next three to six months and everything will be back to normal and we won't have these shortages in the store. Now, if you believe that one, I got a lot of land down in the Everglades that I'd love to sell you. Okay, it's prime real estate too, folks. It's prime real estate. Don't fall for all these things that these people out here are saying. It just doesn't make any sense. A lot of things that have to come over here, they come from overseas because we're so reliant on the overseas shipping. We don't make anything in this country anymore. For that matter, 
we've dug our own grave in this country by letting everything be outsourced to another country and then brought back in here which really if you think about it makes no sense why would you stop making certain goods and stuff in this country and then you let them let these companies they all move overseas and now we're buying the stuff and we have to have it imported back into this country no logic doesn't make sense right you're going to see more retailers clothes and grocery stores and everything else because if they don't have the products they don't have the people they don't have all this kind of stuff they're all going to start closing their doors and everything is going to be going online you're going to order it online and companies like ups fedex and all these companies are going to go through the roof amazon and everything else their prices and their products and their services are going to be what people are going to be depending on in the near future if you understand what i'm saying it is what it is it's something we've got to live with and just go on about our daily lives because this whole control thing and all this scare tactics that the uh the governments and all the media and everything else that are putting out there you know it's nothing but well let's face it a bunch of bs who would have thought three or four years ago that we would be in this position where all these companies and businesses, no matter what they are, they're having to pay 15 to 20 bucks an hour and they still can't get people to go to work. There's something wrong with this picture. What is wrong with people in America? I just don't understand it. We're creating our own problems by not doing what we're supposed to do. Get a job, go to work. You don't live off the government. That's getting you nowhere. And it's not helping out the economy. It's not helping out anybody. It's hurting us in the long run. I don't mean to be like a Debbie Downer, but I'm getting tired of all this misinformation and everything else. Then we get to, they talk about the severe weather. Oh, and wait, now we're going to bring climate change into it. All right, now we got the severe weather with the climate change. And oh my God, it's the end of the world. I thought that's what Charlie Victor 19 was supposed to be, but evidently it's severe weather and climate change if you listen to some of these people. You know what? If you're going to move a truck down the road, you got people that's got to go to work and everything else, they got to use gas. We use the most gas and oil out of any country. You know, I mean, it's just a fact. We're running dry because, well, you know, the current administration closed off a lot of the different pipelines and everything else and, and, you know, just doesn't want to do anything else. And now we're begging Saudi Arabia to give a, you know, pump more oil so that we can continue on our daily routines in life, you know, because we still use a lot of coal and oil and gas and diesel and everything else to power this country that we're in from electricity to boilers to whatever it may be, your cars, vehicles, trucks, trains, what does make sense to me is, is that remember one thing, folks, all right? There are going to be a lot of stores. They're going to be start closing. All different types of stores. All A lot of small businesses are going to go down with this and everything else. It's the perfect storm, as I've been saying, and we need to be prepared and you need to be ready. Because if this thing worsens and it keeps going in the direction that we're going in right now, it's not going to end pretty, folks. Like I said... For a lot of people, the boat has already took on almost as much water as it possibly can. And that last wave could sink your ship. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for joining me today on my video. I'd like to thank you for everything that you do for this channel. Please share these videos and get the word out with all your friends and family. I know I do get a lot of people that tell me that they're trying to work on getting their family on board with prepping and they just don't want to do it. And that is probably because you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. A lot of people believe that everything's gonna be fine, the government's gonna take care of them, and that's how it's gonna be. When the wave hits, the ship is gonna sink. So until next time, folks, I hope you all stay safe, keep prepping, keep your head above water, and I'll talk to you all on the flip side.